Hello and welcome to the Stardog Academy training on data science and machine learning for your enterprise knowledge graph. This is Paraskevi Zerva, one of the solutions architects at Stardog. To let you know a bit more about me, I have been working for more than 10 years designing and modeling data architecture solutions with a keen interest in solving complex data problems in the areas of data integration, data governance, provenance, data quality and data science, specializing on knowledge graph and graph database solutions across different data domains. Today, I'm going to walk you through Stardog's machine learning capabilities for the data science domain and predictive analytics. I'm going to show you how to build a machine learning model and use it for making predictions using Stardog, plus best practices on modeling your data and evaluating accuracy and quality of your results. In this training session, you will learn the machine learning model development lifecycle, Stardog's machine learning features and services for statistical predictions, how to prepare training data for a machine learning model using Stardog, steps to train and evaluate a supervised learning classification model and a machine learning regression model using Stardog, how to build a similarity model using Stardog, how to tune and optimize hyperparameters to improve model performance, and steps to prepare and develop your data in preparation for your model training. So let's start. In the first section, we're going to discuss what is machine learning, the machine learning development lifecycle steps, and the Stardog services available for machine learning model development. Machine learning is the study of computer algorithms, that improve automatically through experience. It is seen as a part of artificial intelligence, and to give a simple definition, that would be that machine learning is the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed. For example, machine learning algorithms built a model based on sample data, known as training data, in order to make predictions or decisions without these algorithms being explicitly programmed to do so. Machine learning is based on statistical inference, uh, therefore in Stardog we are able to add statistical inference on top of the logical inference that Stardog performs already. Stardog machine learning capabilities focuses on predictive analytics, so uh, this provides capabilities to predict nodes and edges in a knowledge graph and extract patterns and make predictions over those patterns. Before going into discussing the Stardog services available to support you in your machine learning model development, it is important to understand the steps of the machine learning model development lifecycle. So the first step is about the data exploration and feature selection engineering uh, process. In this step, uh, data scientists look into exploring, fetching, cleaning and preparing the data in a way that is ready as input to train a model. We also refer to processes in these steps such as data collection, data normalization, and data modeling. On the other hand, feature selection is about the selection of the most relevant attributes to use as input to the training of our machine learning model, and feature engineering is about creating new input features from our existing ones. We also call the process of combining attributes into a new reduced set of features as feature extraction. Uh, the next step um, in um, our model development lifecycle is the model development itself that includes the model training and the model evaluation. And the last one is about uh, the model deployment um, and the model monitoring part. So basically, uh, in this step, we care about deploying a new machine learning model into production and we care about how we can smooth out this process of deployment, but also how can we collect uh, data and evaluate the performance and the quality of our model and monitor this uh, in production environments. So, Stardog provides services and capabilities that support you in all these steps of the machine learning model development lifecycle. It enables you to easily explore and fetch data in preparation for your training process, uh, what we call training data. It also enables you to better structure and model your data 
and also it helps you uh, to select the features, so in the feature selection and the feature engineering processes. And then we can use Tauron Machine Learning Services to train learner model, make predictions and perform predictive analytics and evaluate the prediction results, but also assess the quality of our model. So Startup Machine Learning Services includes services on regression. Uh, this is an algorithm in supervised machine learning that can be trained to predict numerical values and outputs, uh, classification, and this is an algorithm uh, in supervised machine learning that is trained to identify categories and predict categorical values, and at the end, similarity, uh, which is an area of supervised machine learning uh, closely related to regression and classification, uh, but the goal here is to learn a similarity function that measures how similar or related two objects are uh, and can be applied in problems such as ranking and recommendation systems, for example. Uh, to give an example of uh, the different types of uh, ML algorithms here, uh, let's um, imagine a movies database scenario like IMDb, uh, and in such a scenario, uh, predicting the rating of a movie uh, would be considered a regression problem, um, while uh, predicting the gender, the type of the movie, uh, would be considered a classification problem. So to understand in what type, uh, you know, like or category of movies uh, the Godfather movie belongs to, such as a drama type of movie. Uh, in addition, looking for similar movies to the movie Godfather, for example, uh, would require us to use a similarity machine learning model route. So, machine learning startup service implementation is based on a fixed set of algorithms and set of parameters. Right now, we are working with uh, Vaupal Wabit, an extremely efficient and scalable machine learning library to support regression and clustering. And this includes classification, both binary and multi-class classification. Um, on the other hand, the similarity model implementation is based on approximate nearest neighbor search index based on cluster pruning techniques. Um, at last, uh, I would like to mention that there are different machine learning model approaches to build and train a uh, machine learning model. Uh, and we support uh, all of the three in Starog, such as supervised training, unsupervised training, and enabling machine learning over reasoning. Um, and next, we're going to showcase these approaches using Starog by example. Let's look closer into some machine learning examples using Stardog services. We will first focus into a couple of supervised learning examples and let's try to understand what is supervised learning. Supervised learning is a machine learning task of learning a function that maps an input to an output based on example input-output pairs. It infers a function from label training data consisting of a set of training instance examples. And each example is a pair of an input object, uh, typically a vector and a desired output value. And basically this allows us to then learn a model that can be used to make predictions of that data. There are four steps uh, into the model development lifecycle of a supervised learning model. Uh, first uh, is data preparation, so what we have already mentioned is data collection, cleaning, data modeling structure, and, and the second one is to determine the selected features uh, as input to the training model. Third is the actual model training and model development, uh, and fourth uh, is the evaluation of accuracy of the learned model and the predicted results. Next, we're going to walk you through two different examples, uh, a classification and a regression machine learning model example using the IMDb movies dataset. In our movies dataset, movies are linked to an enumeration of movie genres such as drama, comedy, etc. 
So our first machine learning example problem is about predicting what a genre, uh, a completely new movie belongs to based on its properties, uh, which is a classification problem as we need to identify the kind of genre category the new movie uh, fits to. So as we have already mentioned, a uh, first step in the machine learning model development lifecycle is about preparing the training data. The movies dataset uh, contains information about uh, 6,700 movies. Uh, the data itself is very sparse, uh, with movies having varied degrees of detail, and the typical movie identified by its IMDb ID contains the following properties, uh, as we can see in the deck, such as uh, actor, description, uh, director, um, metacritic, uh, also rating. And um, if we want to uh, have a visual uh, version of the movie's dataset as a knowledge graph, uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, and this is like a visual representation using Starduck Studio. So we can see here that uh, bubbles uh, represent movie instances um, and the edges relationships in between um, are about different properties of those movies, uh, such as the ones we, uh, we can see here defined for each movie instance. The second step in our model development process is to select features as input for our machine learning model. We should consider model input um, as a function uh, that, get, that gets us an input an array of values. In startup, we treat select query statements uh, as such functions uh, for the feature selection and engineering process. Features uh, basically represent columns in a relational database uh, or properties in a graph database. Uh, the results of the select query is therefore used to feed uh, this as input back to the machine learning algorithm. The next step on the model development is to train the model. Before Stardot can perform predictions, we need to define what we need to predict. And this task, this task is basically called model training. We basically have to provide the data and the target, and Stardog learns a model that can be used to predict the value of the target, uh, given some other probably unseen data. Training a model in Stardog can be expressed in Sparkle using the insert statements, and where close uh, is used to select the data um, we are interested in um, as uh, what we discuss as features. And then a spatial graph is defined called SPA model uh, in order to specify the parameters of the training. Also, um, it is important to define the type of learning we are performing. There are a number of types we could perform through Stardog available, such as a, a classification model. Uh, so if we are interested in predicting a categorical value that has a limited set of possible values, easy, such as genre of a movie, uh, then uh, we would use the uh, property type of model, SPA classification model. Um, there is also a regression model. Uh, so if we want, for example, to predict a numerical value that can naturally have an unlimited set of values, such as the box office of a movie, uh, then we would use uh, this type of uh, machine learning model and we would uh, denote this by using uh, the class type SPA regression model. And at last, uh, we have a similarity model. So if we want to predict the degree of similarity between two objects, uh, for example, identify most similar movies, uh, then we would actually use the property class type SPA similarity model. So let's see how, based on our movies example, our model will be trained to predict the value of uh, movies genre. As we have already mentioned, the insert clause expresses the model training step. Um, gender model um, is the unique identifier given to this model and is, co is composed of three mandatory properties. First, um, we have the type of the machine learning model. 
which is uh, in our case a uh, classification model as noted by the class type uh, classification model. Second, we have the SPA arguments, which define the variables uh, from the workloads that will be used as features when learning the model. And here is where you define the data that you think will help to make the predictions on the third property, uh, which is given by the SPA predict property. This third property, as we mentioned, um, is uh, the property uh, to be predicted, the target in other means, as noted by uh, the SPA predict uh, notation, uh, and in our case is the movie gender. Then in the workloads, uh, we select the data we're interested in, the so-called features. Therefore, in our movie center case, our model would be trained to predict the value of gender based on the values of uh, director, year, and studio properties. As long as we have trained the model, uh, we can use it for prediction as part of query answering. We select the movie's properties to use as arguments to the model start of learn, uh, such as director, year, and studio. And the magic comes with the predicted gender variable during query execution, that we can see here. Um, its value is not going to come from the data itself, uh, the original uh, dataset, but will instead be predicted by the model based on the values of the arguments we have passed here. And we can see that the result of the query uh, will look like um, this uh, with predicting gender variable, giving as a result the gender variable of trauma in this particular case. The last part of the model development lifecycle is evaluation of the model accuracy and the predicted results. So classification and regression models are automatically evaluated with the data used in their training. And we provide some special aggregate operators that help uh, quantify the quality of a model. For classification and similarity blur problems, one of the most important measures is accuracy. And as we can see here, accuracy is defined as the frequency that we predict the target variable correctly, or else the percentage of the times correct prediction is made. So in our general example, um, the score and the respective metric called SP evaluation score uh, can be queried from the um, uh, SPA model, uh, the special graph of the model we uh, mentioned before. And by default, uh, the accuracy, SPA accuracy property is used uh, for the classification problems. So here for our particular movies example, we can see that uh, by querying the SPA model, uh, the evaluation score of uh, accuracy for the gender model um, has a predicted result of uh, 2.9 um, accuracy. As part of the evaluation, sometimes beside Besides predicting the most probable value for a property, you will be interested to know the confidence of that prediction. By providing the SPA confidence property, uh, you can get confidence levels for all the possible predictions. These values can be interpreted as the probability of the given prediction being the correct one and are useful for tasks like ranking and multi-label classification. For example, in our movies use case example, if we run the following Stardog Sparkle query um, that looks into the SPA confidence property, we can get confidence level for all the possible predictions about the gender of the Godfather movie based on the arguments of director, year, and studio properties. So we can see that as part of the examples of the predicting gene results, uh, the confidence level for the Godfather movie is uh, 2.9 for the drama genre and 1.1 for the crime and fantasy genres. Uh, therefore, um, drama genre showcases a relatively high confidence level uh, score compared to the second and third predicted results. So with this in mind, uh, let's demo building our first classification model. 
Information about the data and code executables can be found uh, in the link below uh, as provided uh, by the training on Startog Learning Git Repo. Before digging into details uh, of how to train this first classification model, let's first load the movies data into Stardog, found under the Stardog Learning uh, Git repo, as we can see here in the picture, into the machine learning training folder, um, and the file would be uh, the movies uh, turtle file here. So there are two ways to create the movies database uh, by using uh, the CLI commands or Stardog Studio interface itself. And in this training, I'm going to use the CLI commands to load the movies turtle dataset. Um, so we should switch to the terminal. So as we can see here, uh, we should make sure that the Stardog server uh, is successfully uh, running and is basically uh, up. Um, and then as long as you, has, uh, you have um, started Stardog server, uh, then the next thing is to use the create command uh, in order to create uh, the MoviesDB database. So this is the name of the database and then here you also define as an argument uh, the dataset file you want to load uh, by creating the movies database. So if we click enter uh, then um, the database uh, should be created. So as we can see uh, successfully created database movies to be uh, so then uh, we are then ready to switch uh, back to studio. If we just refresh here, as we can see, the movies database uh, is created, uh, the database status is in line, and we can also see that the data are loaded. So we can see uh, 193 uh, triples, um, 193 K triples here. So the movies uh, turtle file is already loaded. As a next step, uh, after we have our database up and ready, we should start with training our model. So what we should do is we should switch to our workspace. And as you can see here, I have already um, created a, a folder where I have checked out the machine learning training uh, files. Uh, so we will look on the ones on the classification example. And the first file to look at is the train classification model dot sparkle. It contains the code um, uh, executable about um, training uh, our first model uh, for using the movies data um, uh, from IMDB. So if we look uh, into this um, executable, basically uh, what we have here is uh, an insert query um, that gets um, uh, as an argument uh, the creation of a new uh, model, uh, the gender model. Uh, and as we can see, we have defined the type to be a classification model. And we can also see the arguments defined like director, year, and studio. And the third argument uh, is about uh, the prediction we want to make. So in this case, we want to make a prediction on the um, movie's gender of um, you know, um, a particular movie, for example. Uh, in the workloads, we can see statements um, that have to have to do with the features we're going uh, to use uh, as the input to our training model. So these are our selected features like uh, movie director, copyright year, production company, and gender. Um, in order to execute this um, a snippet, we have to first of all. Uh, Select uh, the movies DB, uh, the one we have just created, and then execute uh, that by clicking run. And as we can see, our database is successfully updated, so that means uh, by using our uh, initial movies dataset, we have uh, now trained a classification model to predict uh, the gender of a movie. Um, the next step, as we have already showcased uh, in our presentation, 
is to be able, by having trained the model, to be able to predict values for the movie gender by executing uh, the predict movie gender sparkle query. So we can find this here. Uh, as we can see, this is a select query. Um, and if we execute this um, by selecting again the movies database and click run, uh, we can see that the predicting gender value is drama. So this value has been predicted not based on the original data, but uh, based on the uh, uh, training model algorithm predicted values. So uh, this is to make a distinction uh, about this particular select query. And, and at last, uh, we have discussed about evaluating accuracy of the model quality and also confidence levels. So for that, we have two additional queries we can execute uh, that you can also find in the repo and represent the exact examples we discussed in our use case example before. So we can find the accuracy query one under um, evaluate accuracy of gender model dot sparkle. And then if we execute that, we get a score about its accuracy. And similarly, uh, we have a query about the prediction of the confidence scores. And if we select the Movies DB and we execute and click run, for that, we actually get the confidence scores uh, with regards to the predicted gene results. So we can see that the predicted genes for um, drama um, is, for example, having a confidence level of uh, 0 0.3, for crime 0 0.1, etc. Next, I'm going to walk you through a different type of model example, a regression model. Our regression problem will be to predict the average user rating given by IMDb users available and denoted through the rating property. Rating is a number with values between 1 and 10 and we will be testing if solely based on the movie's metadata we can accurately predict what rating an average user will give. So the first step, as always, is to prepare the training data and select the features as input to our training model. So as we can see here in the code snippet, in the workloads, uh, we make a selection uh, of the feature properties to be in the training of the model. It is important to note that there is plenty of freedom in defining the variables uh, given as arguments here. For example, we can choose properties that their values may be missing from some movie instances, uh, properties that have any data type, uh, yet startup will infer the best way to integrate them in the learning process. For example, a storyline um, is a text field a data type which could be internally tokenized uh, while gene uh, is a set of values which will be independently integrated as categorical features. So if we move uh, to our next step, uh, the model training, um, as we have already discussed, uh, this is an insert query um, and we have already seen that part in the classification example in our presentation before. In this query, uh, we are going to create a model named R1 and that will predict the movie's average user rating based on its genres, uh, content rating, uh, storyline and metacritic properties. Since rating is a numeric value, this is a regression task. So R1 is identified here as of class type SPA regression model. So what we have seen already in the workloads is a new feature that I would like to take uh, some time to discuss here. And this is the set operator. So what is a set operator? Due to the nature of relational query languages like Sparkle, 
Results are returned for all the combinations between the values of the selected variables. So, in order to properly model relational domains like this, we introduce the special aggregate operator, which is uh, what we call a set operator. Uh, the set operator is used in conjunction with the group by uh, and allows us to easily model this kind of data as a single result per individual. So, in the previous workload snippet code, we used the SPA set operator as an aggregate operator for the selected uh, genus variable. And this will allow us to easily model the genus kind of data as a single result per individual in conjunction with the group by operator. So, we have already discussed the evaluation of a model as a third step of the model development life cycle in machine learning models. The default automatic evaluation technique we have already shown of measuring the accuracy of the model on the same data as that of the training uh, might be prone though to overfitting. And overfitting is a modeling error that occurs when a function is too closely fit to a limited set of data points. This is due to the model learning too much from the training dataset. And in other words, uh, the model remembers a huge number of examples instead of learning to notice features, which basically makes our model useless uh, making accurate predictions. The most accurate measure we can have is testing on data that the model has never seen before. And in StarDoc, we provide an additional property for validation that we call cross-validation. And this property um, automatically uh, will allow us uh, to apply k-fold cross-validation on the training data with a number of folds uh, given as an argument. To also give a definition of cross-validation, sometimes called rotation estimation or out-of-sample testing, uh, this is a model validation technique for assessing how the results of a statistical analysis will generalize to an independent dataset. It is mainly used in settings where the goal is prediction, and one wants to estimate how accurately a predictive model will perform in practice. K-fold cross-validation basically allows you to partition the original training dataset into k equal subsets, where you keep one of the subsets as the training dataset and use the rest for cross-validation. And this allows you to estimate the accuracy of your machine learning model by averaging the accuracies derived in all the k uh, cases of cross-validation. In our example, as we can see in the code snippet, uh, we will be using 100-fold uh, cross-validation using the mean absolute error denoted by the property SPA and AE here as an evaluation metric score. So it is important to note here that in Stardom, as models are automatically evaluated on creation, if we want to control and define how the evaluation will happen, we have to use the uh, SPA cross-validation and SPA uh, evaluation metric properties. And here we can see, after training the regression model, a snippet of the predicted rating results for a set of movies, uh, which again will be a select query as we have already discussed in the classification model example. So, as we have already discussed in the training with validation example, we need to use measures to evaluate a regression model. In the example, we have already shown uh, we have used the mean absolute error for um, basically measuring um, and providing a score uh, for as an evaluation metric. Um, yet we have a few options of measures here we can use. In particular, there are three different measures. Uh, the mean absolute error uh, we have already discussed. This defines how far away is the prediction from the real target number. The mean square error and, and this defines how much is the square difference between prediction and the target number. 
And then the last one is the root mean square error. That defines the square root of the mean square error. It is important to note here that by default, uh, the SPA accuracy property is used for classification problems in startup and SPA uh, mean square error for regression. Uh, the metric can be though changed during model learning by setting the SPA evaluation metric argument as we have already discussed. And if we look here in our insert query again, we can see the evaluation metric argument uh, here defined uh, to mean square error measure. With this in mind, uh, let's demo building our first regression model using the examples we already discussed. Again, information about the data and code executables can be found in the link provided pointing to the Stardog Learning Git repo. And in this case, we're going to use the file executables and queries related to regression model. So this include uh, the train regression model.sparkle and the get predicted results.sparkle. Again, we're going to use the same data set uh, as represented by the movie startup file. And regarding the movies data file, you can create a new instance for the movies database, or you can also clean up your existing database instance, and or even create a separate name graph to use for your regression model example. So if we now move to Studio and we go to Workspace, Again, we can see here we have the file structure of the machine learning training. And in this case, we're going to pick the regression examples. And we will start with the first step, which is to train the regression model under the train regression model .sparkle. So this uh, code executable uh, contains uh, the insert sparkle startup query for training the model. So after we apply this insert query uh, that uses selected features as part of the workflows here, uh, the database uh, can be updated and we can have a new train learned model. So if we uh, select uh, the movies database and then execute and click run, we can see that the database is now successfully updated. And now we are basically ready to use uh, this trained model to make predictions on the movies rating uh, based on the trained feature properties by performing a select query for the movie of our choice. So we have discussed a number of examples using supervised learning method. So let's now deep dive uh, in unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning follows similar steps to supervised learning, but no data preparation is really required. So the first step on preparing data is not really needed here. We still will have to follow the rest of the model development lifecycle steps, including determining input features, training the model using the data and the selected features, and evaluate the accuracy of the learned model. In this type of learning, we will use a similarity model use case example, again based on our movies dataset. So to describe our similarity problem here, um, a simpler and unsupervised way of generating movie recommendation would be finding movies with similar features. This can be achieved by using a similarity model. So finding similar movies based on the properties of movies is going to be the next example of machine learning model we're going to train. This model will identify uh, similar movies based on their genres, directors, authors, producers, and Metacritic score. And it's basically considered a clustering problem. So uh, to give a definition on what is clustering, um, Clustering uh, is the task of uh, grouping a set of objects uh, in such a way that th these objects in the same group, called the cluster, are more similar, in some sense, to each other than those in other groups, so in other clusters. So let's, let's look into the code executable and in particular the feature selection as part of the workloads here. 
We can see that for our similarity module, we're going to choose a number of input features, uh, including the gene, the director, author, producer, uh, with some additional uh, being optional, such as production company and Metacritic here. And in our next step, uh, as we have discussed before, we're going to train our model. So we can see again the classical insert query. Uh, we're going to create uh, a new model called S1 here um, with class type similarity model, SPA similarity model class type. And this takes as arguments the variables of uh, genres, directors, authors, producers, and Metacritic. Um, and with that in mind, we're going to predict similar movies based uh, on these selected features. The underlying algorithm here uh, is based on cluster pruning. And cluster pruning is an approximate search algorithm which groups items based on their similarity uh, in order to speed up query performance. Um, also, the minimum number of items per cluster can be configured with uh, the special property in Stardog uh, called uh, SPA uh, min cluster size property, uh, which is um, by default set to 100. This number uh, in general should be increased with datasets containing uh, many near duplicate items. At last, uh, let's discuss the evaluation step here again. Uh, during similarity prediction, there are two parameters available. Uh, first is the SPA limit. Uh, this restricts the number of the top and items uh, to return and results. And by default, the algorithm returns only the top item or all items if using SPA confidence property. Uh, so in this case, the SPA limit property allows us to be more declarative in our definition of the number of items returned or predicted. And the second property uh, is the SPA clusters. Uh, this property sets the number of similarity clusters used during the search uh, with default value of 1. So larger numbers will increase uh, recall at the expense of uh, slower query time in this case. So for example, if we look at the following query snippet, um, this will return the three top most similar uh, items and their confidence scores restricting the search to 10 clusters based on the SPA limit and SPA clusters declaration special properties. So let's demo building our first similarity model using the examples we already discussed. Information again about the data and code executables can be found in the Stardom Learning Git repository. And in this case, we're going to use the file executables and queries related to similarity model. So this include a uh, train similarity model dot sparkle, a uh, similarity search dot sparkle, and evaluate similarity dot sparkle. So if we now move uh, into Stardock Studio and go in our similarity model folder uh, where we have all the examples here, and we start with the train similarity model dot sparkle file. Uh, as we can see here, um, this is the insert Sparkle startup query for training the model to predict similar movies. And we have selected the movies DB that contains the movies uh, turtle file dataset. And if we just execute this, click run, uh, we can see that the database now is successfully updated. So um, the um, model has been trained and learned and we can now use uh, our model uh, basically in order to predict uh, similarity movie results and do a similarity search. So um, let's now perform a similarity search query. Uh, we move to the similarity search.sparkle and if we look at this query uh, we are going to um, 
predict a similarity movie results for the uh, Big Lebowski um, movie, as we can see here in the values defined. And so if we execute the query and we click run, uh, we can see that we get a number of results uh, with uh, the similar movie label to the Big Lebowski movie and we also get the confidence level score. Uh, so since the Big Lebowski is the same movie, uh, the confidence for that would be 1.0 uh, and then uh, the closest uh, similar search results to the Big Lebowski uh, uh, the Big Lebowski movie uh, based on the, the confidence uh, level scores is rating Arizona, such as uh, like uh, having a confidence score of uh, 0 0.9, uh, Burton Plick uh, again having a confidence score of 0 0.9, close to 1, and uh, the man who wasn't there, uh, etc. And we have limited to get results for this query up to 5. Uh, so that's the way, the, the reason uh, we are getting uh, only five results here. So we can change this parameter um, to like a different number score, so it's 10. And if we click run and execute, then we can see we get a, a larger number of results and the confidence level scores for that. You have already learned a lot on how to build different types of machine learning models using Stardog. So let's discuss some additional features here. One of the first topics to look into is data modeling. The way you input data into Stardog during model learning is of utmost importance in order to achieve good quality predictions. For example, modeling data with correct data types can increase model quality. Data types in Stardog can be modified at query level, basically at training time. And Stardog does special treatments on values of the following types. For example, numbers such as XSD integer, XSD byte or float and double are treated internally as weights and properly model the difference between values. Strings, on the other hand, are tokenized and used in a bag of word fashion. Sets created with the SPA set operator are interpreted as a bag of words of categorical features. And booleans, um, such as XD boolean data type, are modeled as binary features. Everything else is modeled as categorical features. Also, setting the correct data type for the target variable given through SPA predict is extremely important. For example, with regression, we should make sure values are numeric. Uh, with classification problems, individuals of the same class should have consistent data types and values. And with similarity, we should use values that uniquely identify an object such as an IRI. Another important topic is hyperparameter optimization. Finding the best parameters for a model is a time consuming and laborious process. Stardog helps to ease the pain by performing an exhaustive search through a manually specified subset of parameter values. All possible sets of parameter configurations that can be built from the given values um, through using the configuration of SPA learning rate and SPA has um, will be evaluated. And we can see this in the example here. The different configurations uh, will be SPA learning rate of 0.1, SPA has all, and then SPA learning rate uh, of 1, and SPA has all, and then the last would be SPA learning rate um, and SPA hustle. The best configuration will be chosen and its model will be saved in the database. Afterwards, parameters are available for querying just like any other model metadata through a select query. So we can see here in the select query uh, the values available for the SPA learning rate and has configuration. 
At last, uh, let's wrap up our understanding regarding the reasoning flow and how logical and statistical reasoning interwork together. So our starting point is always an asserted graph composed of asserted nodes and edges. If we apply logical reasoning to this, this sets up to an inferred graph with inferred statements, uh, not nodes and edges. The inferred graph provides us additional inferred statements and enables query answering. The result of the query answering can be represented by Sparkle query results uh, in a table or data form that we can then use as input now to statistical reasoning to enable machine learning capabilities and allow predictions as a result of a machine learning model output. At last, uh, we can optionally choose to materialize the predicted results dataset as a new knowledge graph that can form the starting asserted graph uh, for a new reasoning cycle. That concludes the Stardog Academy training on data science and machine learning for your enterprise knowledge graph. We have reviewed the machine learning model development lifecycle, Stardog's machine learning features and services for statistical predictions, how to prepare training data for a machine learning model using Stardog, steps to train and evaluate a supervised learning classification model and a machine learning regression model using Stardog, how to build a similarity model using Stardog, how to tune and optimize hyperparameters to improve model performance, and steps to prepare and develop your data in preparation for your model training. Thank you for following along. If you have any questions, Please review your frequently asked questions phase or head to stardoc.com slash docs for additional information.